Welcome back to the IPB series by Doctrine Digest. This video focuses on step four, determine threat courses of action. The doctrinal proponent for IPB step four is ATP 2-01.3, chapter six. Step four identifies and describes the threat courses of actions that can influence friendly operations. The S2 or G2 identifies likely objectives and desired end state by threat forces and how the threat commander intends to achieve these goals through threat co-development. The collection manager develops the initial collection requirements from these COAs to enable friendly command decision making and determination of which threat COA is being actioned. Key products from this step are develop threat COAs with production of a COA situation template and threat COA statement. Then sub-step two, develop the event template and matrix or the event temp and the event matrix. Sub-step one for step four requires analysis of previous IVB steps to enable threat COA development by understanding threat characteristics, threat operational art and capabilities, terrain effects, and civilian considerations within the OE. We should ask ourselves, what is the threat's objective? How do they intend to achieve that objective through threat tasks, available resources and capabilities, and then the final threat end state? What do they want? and how are they going to achieve that want. To build threat COAs, a technique is to combine the threat template of current known locations from IPB Step 2, doctrinal array from the doc temp in Step 3, with the MACU from IPB Step 2. By combining these different documents into one, you're looking at the terrain within the AO and applying threat characteristics, doctrine, and established patterns in an attempt to adjust templated threat positions based on observations of the MACU refiner of the MACU, and then identifying how a threat COA might develop by asking questions like, does this piece of terrain become key for observation or entry into potential threat engagement areas or potential threat avenues of approach? Do certain avenues of approach themselves benefit a desired end state due to availability of mobility corridors? Do weather potentially impact and make that avenue of approach untenable? The sit temp within the COA is developed to describe the threat through time and space. The overlay will identify doctrinal rates of march, timed phase lines, graphic control measures including, but not limited to, threat boundaries, engagement areas, and potential obstacle emplacement. They will then take a look at and identify threat unit composition, disposition, and strength, updating from previous substeps, identify key weapon systems with range fans, and apply friendly named area of interest, or NAIs, on top of this template. An intelligence staff function should attempt to develop as many COAs as possible and then apply a priority and review for feasibility to conduct such a COA. Reference FM60 for MDMP COA selection criteria and apply the same model. If time is limited, selection should focus on the development of a most likely and a most dangerous course of action for development. It should be noted that the term most deadly course of action has crept into our army lexicon since the start of the global war on terror but this is not a doctrinal correct term. Once the graphic sit temp for the threat COA is developed, a supporting COA statement is drafted. The COA statement is a narrative that describes the situation template overlay. This statement at a minimum includes threat mission, threat commander's intent, desired end state, decisive and supporting operations, and then a breakdown of task units by warfighting function or task function. Task within zone, either disruption, battle, or support activities and then identify what is key in describing through time and space how the threat will action to meet its commander's desired end state and how you can best present that information to your commander to understand the situation. Substep two, the event temp, is a guide for collection planning that depicts the named areas of interest where activity or lack of activity indicates which threat COA has been adopted. This overlay is used during MDMP COA analysis to confirm or deny the threat through wargaming. Additionally, this overlay develops information collection overlay, collection matrix, and formulates the priority of intelligence requirements. It should comprise timelines based on rates of march, NAIs to identify collection points, and decision points where a threat commander must make a decision on how to continue their operations. Threat decision points also assist in the development of indicators to help friendly commanders and staff with COA development and execution to identify and engage the threat. 
The event matrix enables cross-referencing process that enables indicators, threat decision points, and activities to assist in determination of which code is being executed. The last set of products produced in subset two of the threat COA dev is the decision support template or DST and the information collection matrix. DST provides a commander a structured basis for employing effects of, on a threat or enemy force by determining points on which a battlefield where a decision will be required. The information collection matrix developed by the collection manager identifies approved priority intelligence requirements with indicators, specific information requirements, assigned NAIs and set time for observation, means to identify or assets tasked to observe, which commander decision point is tied to the PIR or SIR, and which target area of interest will be actioned, which HVT will be present at that identified location and time. This concludes initial IPB and feeds into the continued execution of MDMP step two leading into step three. IPB step four provides the final holistic analysis of an operational environment and area of operation through time and space to enable a commander's decision-making process. As MI assets are never at rest and information will adjust, continuous refinement and update will be required by the intelligence lead and through communications with other staff and headquarters. Visit the Army Publishing Directorate website for a complete listing of active Army publications and see Chapter 6 of ATP 2-01.3, Intelligence Preparation of Battlefield, for more in-depth review of Step 4 in the IPP process. <laughs>